Hello. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for being here. So, Mr. Lanier Richardson, tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your story? Great. So, I am Lanier Richardson. Mm -hmm. I'm a uh, Chicago boy that's now splitting his time between New Jersey and Chicago. Okay. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I'm a uh, social venture CEO, as they call it. And I am also uh, a faculty member at Rutgers Business School in Newark, New Jersey. Uh huh. And I had something called the Center for Urban Entrepreneurship and Economic Development at Rutgers. Fantastic. So, a few different points that we need to touch on for sure out of that bio. But to start, tell me, when did you fall in love with tech and entrepreneurship? So, I fell in love mm -hmm. with entrepreneurship. Okay. Uh, when I was 13 years old, my father told me, "You're gonna want to own a, you're gonna want to drive a car when you're 16." Right. right. And he sat with us, and we set goals so that I could save like $1,200 to buy my first car. Really? And so I, you know, did everything from clean up to you know sell CD, you know, sell bootleg CDs back in the day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and but so I fell in love with entrepreneurship then. I fell in love with tech around a central problem. Okay. which was whenever I talk to entrepreneurs, they always say to me the same three things. Mm -hmm. I need more access to capital, I need mm -hmm. more contacts, and I need more contracts. And when I got to Rutgers Business School, I would hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. But in tech, people had some opportunity, but they really said, I can't get capital. I can't get into an accelerator. For some reason, my story's not resonating with um, you know, sort of angel investors. Mm -hmm. And so my focus in tech has been around helping black and Latino entrepreneurs get access to capital to grow and scale their technology. Mm -hmm. That's what I find fun. Right, and with Rutgers, have you found that using academia as sort of your platform has been really instrumental in being able to reach blacks and Latinos and sort of the underserved population within the entrepreneur scene? So Rutgers has been a really phenomenal platform mm -hmm. for me. Okay. Um, about to start our 10th year uh, of the Center for Urban Entrepreneurship and Economic Development. Mm -hmm. We have a chancellor who's been very outspoken uh, about the university should be anchor institutions and should be of the community, not just in it. Mm -hmm. We have a dean at our business school has, has made social impact a strategic priority. The center I run is really the uh, front door uh, to the community. I get to open the doors of the business school and facilitate access to all the resources that we have to people of color, to entrepreneurs, first generation entrepreneurs, immigrant mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs with disabilities, young people who are entrepreneurs. Uh, I get to facilitate access and use the platform of the business school mm -hmm. to help them get to the next level. So I say the work we do at Rutgers is around connecting entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and community revitalization, connecting entrepreneurship and economic development very intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, and we have some good results, which, is, uh, which makes the work a lot of fun. Right, and since you're very focused on entrepreneurship at Rutgers, there's a lot of conversation within the entrepreneurial um, world in terms of college may not be the right place if you want to be an entrepreneur. What's your sort of take on that? So I agree with that. Okay. Um, you know, I think education as a founding principle, education is the way out of poverty. It's the best way out of poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, when I look at my own family, you know, you can just look, uh, you know, right down the line. Those who had educational opportunities and took mm -hmm. advantage of the educational opportunities they had, uh, you, you know, they're doing, quote unquote, better in, you know, the American society. So I don't want to discount that college and higher education is not important. I really personally believe that it's very important. However, the work that we do at the center is not focused on uh, helping just students who are in the business school. Mm -hmm. As I said, we open the door to entrepreneurs. My, one of my favorite stories is we run an entrepreneurship capacity building program for creative entrepreneurs, filmmakers, videographers, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, photographers, uh, guy who produces Broadway shows, bloggers, and the guy who is the photographer, he said, you know, I'm doing a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in revenue. Mm -hmm. I have photos are, that are in a bestseller. 
uh, I went to the best photography school in the country, but I never had one hour of business training. Wow. Mm -hmm. So for us to use, you know, uh, the position we have yeah. and the platform at Rutgers to help a uh, entrepreneur of color be able to become better business person, ultimately to be able to pursue his creative passion full time as a business, ultimately to be able to hire someone, so it's wealth creation and job creation. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of fun for me. Yeah, icing on the cake. That's icing on the cake. <laughs> um, you were sort of talking about first generation. So going back to the story that you were telling us about in the beginning in terms of how your father sort of introduced you to the idea of entrepreneurship at 16, are you a first generation sort of in that same vein? As, as your well, students and the people that you work with. Well, interestingly, I can honestly say I'm a second generation entrepreneur. Fantastic. So my father uh, did, not go, did not go to a four year college. He went to mm -hmm. the uh, military. Okay. Uh, but early on in his sort of career, he decided, you know, I need to do something entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. And he was an air traffic controller, the first air traffic, black air traffic controller at O'Hare Airport in Chicago. But there was a layoff, a federal layoff of all air traffic controllers mm -hmm. in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. About a year before the layoff, he had started working on his own little business. And his, through his entrepreneurship, it really supported our family. Mm -hmm. Now, early on in their best year, maybe he made $100,000 a year, but it sent my brother and I to college. It provided for us to have a stable middle class. And it was through his entrepreneurship. He owned a bar, he owned popcorn stores, Mm -hmm. uh, he owned little real estate properties that, you know, but it was that moxie and that hustle, that entrepreneurship right, uh, right. hustle that when we grew up, we talked about I hired a new employee today. We got a new lease. We're bidding on this contract. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't get the bid. We didn't get the contract. Oh, you know what? We're going to meet with a banker. And they told us that our loan request was too small. Wow. Yeah. So those conversations in our household, our one brother, my mother and father, those conversations were every day in our household. Exactly. Yeah. I try to use the platform I have now mm -hmm. to uh, share that with other folks who didn't have that benefit. Mm -hmm. So it's made me a better entrepreneur. It'll make my kids a better entrepreneur. And I realize that people who are the first generation entrepreneurs in our program didn't really have that just orientation. Exactly, yeah. And now they don't have, you know, we're, we're exposing people to relationships. What accountant do I use? Who's mm -hmm. a good lawyer? How do I think about intellectual property? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, who are my peers? Yeah. Who's loaning money? How do you prepare to loan money? How do you prepare your pitch deck? Which one of these programs are the best? Mm -hmm. uh, best use of my time. So, uh, you know, how do I think about a strategic plan? Who's my financial coach? Those are the type of questions that we're hoping uh, to answer generally about entrepreneurs. Now, in tech, yeah. if I just for a second, we're having some fun in tech mm -hmm. because um, we're intentionally working to help entrepreneurs of color. And again, I like to just be sort of frank about it: black and Latino entrepreneurs uh -huh. to access capital, to grow and to scale, and even to start their technology ventures. And we're really focused on the money. Mm -hmm. So uh, about a year ago, we applied for a grant at the federal government level to help more minority entrepreneurs in the government parlance apply for uh, federal grants to start technology companies. Mm -hmm. And there was a stat out there that less than 3% of the federal grant applications for a program they call it Small Business Innovation Research Grants. Black people weren't applying. Only 3% of the applicants were from people mm -hmm. uh, that were African American. So our grant is to work specifically with them mm -hmm. to help them, you know, help us yeah. apply for those grants. It's federal, it's paperwork. Yeah. I say it's non-sexy capital. It's, you know, it's like government. It sounds like, you know, there's government money available. Sounds it's like solid. it's not true. But there's 97, and there are $150,000, you know, seed grants, non-dilutive capital mm -hmm. that we want to help more people of color, black, Latino, women, be able to apply for. That's one program. Other, so we call that CUED-PIE. CUED is our Center for Urban Entrepreneurship and Economic Development. 
Pi is Pipeline to Inclusive Innovation. So QPi.com is the right. website. Okay. QPi.com. Everyone needs to write that down. QPi.com. Yes. Right. And then the other one is uh, Black and Latinos in Tech, okay. which is really focused on solving the challenge of why more people, uh, more Black and Latino technology entrepreneurs are not getting admitted into accelerators hmm. or attracting meaningful capital. Okay. So we're working to help them put together teams. We put some capital on the table ourselves to match. If they get into an accelerator, we'll, you know, they have some additional incentive capital. Uh, we're trying to solve a specific problem. So our vision is, you know, we're at the start of 2017 that when we sit down at Black Tech Weekend next year, mm -hmm. we'll be able to say three African American and Latino companies got $150,000 federal grants to start their technology companies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, three black or Latino companies uh, are admitted into accelerators and on that first level, uh, first rung of the ladder mm -hmm. and getting capital. Mm -hmm. So, you know, very specific metrics that we hope uh, will come together. Yeah. On the term of the accelerators, what have you seen has been one of the major challenges that prevents sort of blacks and Latinos getting into accelerators and, and how do we sort of address that? So there's, um, I think there are two sides to the coin. So okay. for about two years, at least once a month, sometimes mm -hmm. once a week, we get a call or uh, someone would knock on the door at my office and say, I applied, I'm not getting in. Or I heard this new accelerator is coming to town, I'm really excited about it, but I'm not getting in. Mm -hmm. And so part of the research has been that, you know, there are all this stuff around, you know, unintentional bias and unconscious bias and people not understanding the product of, of, of minority tech entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Um, so some of that is there, so that's one part of the challenge. Mm -hmm. The other part of the challenge that we're, which I think we can help address, is many of the technology entrepreneurs that, uh, of color mm -hmm. haven't put together the team. So to really be able to get capital, to really have the highest probability of getting admitted into an accelerator, you need to have a team. Right. You need to have a CEO, a visionary, right. you, uh, you need to have someone who codes, uh, you need to have someone who markets, you need to have, with the three of them, be able to show that you have a minimally viable product. Exactly. And mm -hmm. so, uh, while there is, you know, some uh, difficulty mm -hmm. and uh, some barriers and some biases that are keeping people of color from getting capital, right. we're trying to solve the other side and saying we want to put the best and the brightest. We want to find people who are coachable, m figure out how to help them structure teams, mm -hmm. get tech talent, get development talent, get uh, customers for their product, so that they, when they go and make the pitch to accelerators programs, when they're talking to venture capital firms or talking to angel investors, they really do have, you know, they're, they're at their best. They have their highest um, probability of being successful. Yeah. No. That's the goal. So it's dual. It's like we got to be ready, and like we always know, you know, we got to be tight, and our stuff has to be a hundred percent. Right. But this question of team and entrepreneur in tech, more I think than any place else, team means something. Exactly. You know, historically, entrepreneur, I'm a renegade. I'm doing it myself. I'm getting Long capital. Ball. In mm -hmm. tech, I, I'm learning that uh, as much as important as the entrepreneur's vision is. Mm -hmm. um, and that is paramount, but an immediate close second is, do I believe in that you have the team that are, is able to execute and deliver the results? Exactly. So we're about to wind down, but I want to have a little fun. Are Great. you a cocktail or a beer person? I'm a cocktail guy. Okay. What's your favorite cocktail? So I, Johnny Walker Black, everybody knows me. Every Christmas I get, mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody sends me bottles of scotch. I'm a loyal Johnny Walker Black man. I'll experiment some with other scotches. That's fantastic. Tell us a little bit about how we can reach you, um, where we can find you, and also any information that you can share about getting into your program. Sure. So the easiest way to reach me is I'm on Twitter is at Lanier Richardson. My name is spelled a little funny. It's L-Y-N-E-I-R, mm -hmm. at Lanier Rich, uh, Twitter. Uh, easiest email is just my first name again. It's Lanier, it's L-Y-N-E-I-R, at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, the programs, uh, please Google the Center for Urban Entrepreneurship and Economic Development at Rutgers Business School. 
And we have cuedpie.com, C-U-E-E-D-P-I-I.com, and blackandlatinotech.com. That is fantastic. Any last words that you want to leave? Any advice? Little um, nuggets? I guess the nugget is, uh, you know, keep the eye on the capital. Keep and the eye be, on the capital. Be agnostic to the source of the capital. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Look forward to seeing you soon.